Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a few really quick simple fixes I've made with 3D printed parts that I designed using just Tinkercad. This CAD software is completely browser based and free for anyone to use and it's incredibly easy. My boys have this basketball game that hangs from a door, the plastic frame snapped during one of their slam dunk sessions, the square rod measured up to 11.2 millimeters. In Tinkercad, I made a square hole measuring 11.2 millimeters for the broken rod. Uh, to add a bit of clearance, I increased this to 11.3. I made the solid square around it 13.3 millimeters, so it should be close to 1 millimeter thick walls. Then I highlight both shapes and click align to put the hole right in the middle. I brought in another hole to open up one side a bit, just to make getting it on and off a little easier. Over in the Cura Slicer, I set it up to print standing up. This orientation won't be the best for strength though. If I needed the best strength out of this, it should be printed on its side since the layer lines will be a weak point. But I'm impatient, so I just printed it vertically as a temporary fix. It was meant to be temporary, but it's been almost a year now and this is still holding up. This airplane bed's wing wasn't built to be used as a diving board, but when the floor is lava, you have to do some crazy maneuvers. Anyway, I removed the broken screws and dealt with the shredded chunk of wood here. The diameter of the support rods measured at 25 millimeters, which is pretty close to an inch, and they were angled at about between 6 and 7 degrees. Using Tinkercad, I made the center hole 26 millimeters, giving an extra millimeter for clearance to hold the 25 millimeter rods. The cylinder around the hole will have an outer diameter of 32 millimeters. Now I select the objects and click a line and center the hole so it's right in the middle. Then click merge to make one solid object out of the two cylinders. Now I tilt it from the top to add a little bit of an angle to it. Add the square bracket to the bottom. I used a generic screw model to put the pilot holes with countersinks in place. This is how they turned out. Not too bad. To secure the wing to the bed itself, I got this corner bracket at printables.com uploaded by Sebastian1701. I know I could get a metal set of these for a dollar, but when you have a 3D printer at home, Okay, I still don't think it's safe as a diving board, but with the printed brackets and a bunch of wood glue, it's more secure than it originally was. This is our shoe rack at home, and I don't know how it happened, but three of the rubber caps that go on the bottom to protect the floor went missing. I decided to print new ones, which will need an inner diameter of 19 millimeters. Making the cap in Tinkercad is pretty much the same as the flange for the airplane bed, except this one only needs two cylinders. I just made a cylinder hole with a diameter of 19.1 millimeters, then another one with a slightly wider outer diameter. I lifted the hole up along the z-axis to make the base 3 millimeters thick. Now with both shapes selected, I click merge to make one solid object. For these I'll be using TPU from Overture, a flexible rubber-like filament. I haven't used Overture's TPU that much yet, but I used it to make these couch riser pads because the set of eight couch risers that we ordered from Amazon only actually came with four of the rubber pads for floor protection. Flexible filaments like TPU are a little tricky to print with, and if you forget to change the retraction settings after using PLA, this can happen, which is not very fun to fix. In the slicer, I have these printing at a very slow 20 millimeters per second, and slowed the retraction speed down, and these settings worked for me. I multiplied the model to print four at once, TPU can be tricky to remove from the print surface sometimes, but throwing the whole thing in the freezer for a few minutes helps a lot. I haven't really tested or calibrated for this TPU yet, but this model came out pretty nice. And they fit on the bottom of this shoe rack perfectly. And alright, no more wobbling or scratching the wood floors. Eh, it needs resurfaced anyways, I guess. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you found this video interesting. I know this software isn't nearly as powerful as something like Fusion 360, but Tinkercad is really simple to use. It's so quick and easy to use when you're just throwing together a simple part. Well, I'll see you guys later.